All right, everyone, thank you all for returning for our last formal panel of the day. And to moderate it, I turn the floor over to my colleague and university legend, Jeffrey Stone. <laughs> thank you, John. <laughs> so this panel, the most important of the day, <laughs> will be talking about free speech on campus and academic freedom um, with representatives of uh, the major national organizations uh, that focus on these issues and therefore have a thoughtful uh, perspectives on how we can address these sorts of questions. So I will let each of you briefly introduce yourself um, and then we'll turn to the substance. Hi, I'm Alex Mori. I'm the director of campus rights advocacy at FIRE. Hi, I'm Ben Wisner. I'm the director of the Speech, Privacy, and Technology Project at the American Civil Liberties Union. And I'm Jeff Flyer. Uh, I'm a physician scientist, formerly the dean of Harvard Medical School. Uh, I spent, uh, st starting from 2017, I joined the board of Heterodox Academy. As a university president, you make your life a lot easier when you have excellent free speech policies and then you point to them every time in controversies, big and small, and then the expectation from the student body becomes censorship is not on the menu here at the University of Chicago or here at the university or college of wherever. And you know, one of the things that's impressed me so much about you know, getting to meet some of the students here at the University of Chicago is you know, they talk about, you know, I'm getting a really robust education here. I feel like we can have debates on issues like abortion and race and all that in my classes, and I don't, I'm not worried about that. That is not what we hear from students at a lot of other schools. Those tensions are real. Um, they flare up uh, after, for example, the ACLU of Virginia represented Jason Kessler in Charlottesville uh, after the George Floyd murder. Uh, they're not new, and we have a way of, of handling and accommodating them. You know, I can say we still continue to do the traditional controversial First Amendment work that the ACLU has done, but I don't want to sugarcoat and you know, pretend that, that we're somehow immune from the kinds of winds that are blowing in society uh, and are buffeting liberal organizations, including universities, newspapers, and others. He told me, look, her book is fantastic. The argument against her that's being circulated is false. I said, but have you said anything about that? Have you sent out an email to your faculty? He said, no, it would be viewed as punching down on the graduate student, and I can't do that. I said, this, what you've said to me does not make any sense to me. I said, any way I can help? Uh, he said, why don't you write a supporting letter? <laughs> so I spent the day writing a two-page defense of her book. So when you're confronted with that demand um, from students, uh, this is not a situation where they can be treated like the customer. Uh, there have to be pretty clear limits about what's negotiable here and what's not. What I'm asking is how far would you go in protecting the First Amendment rights of the candidates? Or would you say it's okay for the university to decide not to hire that person because they have the prerogative of deciding certain viewpoints are wrong. But if you right. actually want to change the world and not shout about it, you're going to have to find a language for persuading people who don't agree with you today. I hope that you will view this event as a first experiment, as a beginning, not an end, and that you will see the forum as a place for the constant struggle to get this right, <laughs> that we will do this over in different ways, bringing different kinds of ideas so that together the forum can be an open place where we struggle together to uphold the highest values of the knowledge creation that universities should always uphold, but that are so hard to do in practice. That's the intent of this forum, and you're invited to be a part of it as long as you are willing to.